All right, Victor, you went down there, obviously, to, to play good golf and to enjoy the time there. We know you played good golf, but how well did you enjoy the last week? <laughs> uh, I did enjoy it, yeah. Um, it's kind of hard to – I didn't really expect much because I didn't know how it was going to be like or what was it what it was going to be like. But uh, I got to play with some awesome players and uh, in front of a great atmosphere. and um, Yeah, play some good golf as well, which helped the experience. How – when you talk about how quickly that week went, I mean, you're just kind of going out there, you say, just trying to get through, play some good golf, and then on Sunday you're sitting next to Tiger Woods and another <laughs> Kevin. What's that like? Yeah, uh, the week went pretty quick, but then also when I look back at the whole week, it was it was a long week too because uh, there's just so much that, that happened. <clears throat> um, but yeah, definitely after playing well and earning the low ender um, recognition, that was pretty special, but then Getting to sit right next to Tiger, that was kind of the, the cherry on the top. Whenever the TV cameras cut to you guys in Butler Cabin, you, you and him were having a conversation. What were you guys talking about? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know the cameras were rolling. Uh, <laughs> so I quickly realized that eight later and I uh, felt a little bad. But um, I just told him that uh, I was there playing at the Junior Invitational in, at Sage Valley when he came. And, uh, yeah, I just told him uh, it's pretty cool to be sitting right next to you. Uh, right now, so. Was he receptive back to you? Yeah, he was. He was really nice, and he thought it was cool. So, um, yeah, he was great. I'm sure he was happy. <laughs> you played with you, you reference this. You played with a lot of champions, mm -hmm. even uh, over the course of the week. Was there anyone who was m most helpful, or or that you enjoyed spending time with that surprised you? They were all really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I learned some things here and there from Sergio, and then. Uh, Bernard Longer had some other things to add, and then Ricky was great, and um, uh, played with Brooks and DJ as well, and they were all uh, really great at just giving me advice. Um, you know, you kind of think of those guys as kind of in their own head and just doing their thing, but they did a really good job of kind of taking care of me, which I was a little surprised over. Um, but, um, and then in a tournament, you know, you're you're focused on your game right. and you're just kind of chit-chatting. So it wasn't really much advice to get there, but um, no, they were they were all really good to me. What just did, in general, oh, sorry. Just in general, how did the experience allow us to compare to your expectations? Yeah, I, I don't even know. I've had that question a couple times before and I don't really know how to answer it because uh, I, I just had no clue how the week was going to be like. Uh, but, you know, to play Augusta, that course is amazing. And I didn't know, I didn't quite fathom how many people were out there watching. And so that was crazy. And obviously just to play with, I played with seven major champions uh, out there for the week. Um, and that, that's pretty cool to see. And I got, some, got to see some variations of it from, you know, uh, Brooks and DJ, kind of the longer and straighter hitters and kind of more impressive if you could say, and then, you know, Bernard Longer, which is still winning every single golf tournament, just just like a machine. Um, so it was really cool to see that mix as, as well, and then obviously to play well. How did you adjust to having such a big crowd out there? Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, I, I think I just kind of prepared myself the first day, just knowing that they were going to be there. Uh, but I was surprisingly calm. For um, yeah, when I was playing, um, and I think playing the national championship out here and uh, getting to play a couple of the PJ Tour events that I played really prepped me for that. Um, so I just kind of felt felt ready to go and just play my game. They always talk about how it goes to kind of the roar of the crowd kind of rolls throughout the entire golf course. What's that like when you're out there playing and you just hear something from behind you or in front of you? Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's either if it's a big roar, you, it's either a hole in one or a Tiger Woods making a birdie. So uh, now it, it's pretty cool. It, it gives you chills down your spine. Um, and it's cool if um, you get to hit a couple of nice shots as well that the, that the crowd like. Uh, you can kind of get a, a feel from that. And um, it kind of gives you a little momentum going forward to the next few holes. So uh, yeah, that's really cool. What did you do the time between your round ending and Tiger's round ending? What, what were you doing then? Uh, after the last round? Yeah. Um, so I went 
there was a member that took me down a cabin um, and we literally sat there with a couple of the other members uh, just watching the yeah Tiger and the other guys play the last few holes and uh, I think when he was on 17 they took me to Butler's cabin and I was standing there with Patrick Reed and Jim Nance was in the corner kind of still commenting and yeah just kind of getting ready for everything to, to happen. So were you watching on TV? Yeah yeah the, yeah. The, yeah I wasn't on the 18th green. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have wanted to because I, I heard it was pretty loud when when Tiger won but uh, yeah I'm not complaining. <laughs> Then when that moment happened, you know, when you're waiting in the cabin and then Tiger walks in after winning, how kind of surreal was that then? Yeah, uh, they kind of had us sitting on the chairs on beforehand, just kind of make sure everything's ready. And then he kind of just quickly came in um, and tapped my back and said, hey, awesome playing, congrats. And I didn't really know what to, what to say. I was sitting down and just kind of looking up. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was... Uh, yeah, I was definitely the most nervous I was the whole week. When were you back in Stillwater? I got back Monday, so the day after. Um, 1.30. Was it 1.30? 130. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> and did you, go to, did you go to class? or did you come? I, I only had one class in the, in the morning, so I missed that one, but I went to class the next day. So you went to the, just went home? Yeah. And you, yeah. Where do you, where's that? Where, where do you, where's your life? I live... Uh, uh, in the dorms on campus. Yeah. So you go from Butler Cabin with Tiger to the yep. dorm here in Stillwater. Yeah. Was your head still halfway back in Augusta when you were when you got home, or did you had you had you pivoted to okay? Back I, to the I pivoted. Uh, it was kind of nice to get back to, to Stillwater, uh, just to kind of um, yeah relax a little bit and kind of go back to normal. What was the reaction from your teammates here like? Uh, they were happy for me. Sent me some some nice congratulatory texts and yeah, just talked about it for a little bit and yeah, obviously it was exciting. Kind of going back to your play at the Masters, was there any certain moment where maybe you kind of settled in mentally, or maybe Coach Bratton kind of helped you really gain confidence? Uh, I was a little, I was probably more tensed up early in the first round. Um, but I made a really nice birdie on number two to kind of settle my nerves a little bit. But then I made a really bad bogey on three, and uh, I made another bogey on what hole was that? I can't even remember. It's all blur. But I was I was over par early in the front nine, or yeah, after the front nine, and then I hit it in the water on on eleven. Uh, but I made a really nice bogey to still be two over. Uh, and then after that, I kind of hit some good shots and made some birdies that got me back. Um, and that's kind of when I, I started to ease down a little bit, but knowing that, okay, I have a few, not easy holes, but I, I can you know, make something happen. And I did, and I ended up being in a, in a decent position after the first round, and then I was kind of ready, ready to keep going. What was it like for you to have those other three other amateurs who also made the cut kind of going through the experience with you? Yeah, I thought that was really cool, especially... Alvaro Ortiz were really good friends, and it was good to see him playing well as well. And um, yeah, obviously it was really competitive, uh, and I think that's really cool to see that um, amateur golf has such a high standard. Um, and I'd say I definitely didn't play lights out, and I don't think the other three amateurs did that either. Um, and I think that's pretty cool. I think that's something that we all. Um, will take a lot from Masters is really all about tradition. I mean, there's so many little different things that they do, and you got to do quite a bunch. What was the part three contest like? Was that just kind of a nice relaxing day, or was it? How did you approach that? Uh, yeah, that was fun. Um, I played nine holes earlier in the day, and I felt like I was kind of ready to go. Um, but then instead of kind of just sitting around and getting all tense, it was nice to uh, play the part three. I played with two fellow Scandinavians, the two – Danish guys, and I had my dad on the bag, and it was kind of just a, a fun moment. Just super relaxed, you're just out there, you know, talking and enjoying it. How much impact does this have in back home, what you're doing here? I, I don't know. I know uh, I'm getting a lot of con uh, con yeah, congratulations right. for back home, and uh, I actually had a, a few Norwegian guys come over to watch, um, which is really cool, but I don't know. The, 
the overall impacts on them. I'm not the right per person to ask. Where does golf rank in Norway? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of people that play it, but there's it doesn't really have or carry that much significance. Um, it's mainly soccer. That's the main part. Uh, when it's not winter, and in the winter it's cross country skiing or right. every other ski or winter sport. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's not it's not that big, but um, I think maybe they're starting to realize that it's a, a world sport and mm -hmm. kind of bigger than a lot of other sports that we enjoy doing. Yeah. But I don't know. That's a hard sport to play, right? It there, is. You, I, mean, I remember reading something about how you played snow even once or so, or yeah, flurries yeah. at least. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I spent five months, four or five months indoors hitting balls right. of the year. So it's not it's not easy to recruit um, kids to play golf. Yeah. And especially in the summer, the courses aren't great compared to what we're used to. Um, so it's just it's just a different deal. Sure. Did this experience help you think at all about kind of what your decision will be for what you'll do after this season? Uh, a little bit, of course. Um, I think I played with a lot of really good players, and I saw that my game wasn't that far from them. Um, obviously, there's things that I need to improve and want to improve, but it's cool to see that I can play kind of my, my everyday game and still hang with, a, with some of the best players in the world. I know you talked about Butler Cap and any other interactions with Tiger that were kind of your favorite stories. Uh, he was a busy man that uh, <laughs> at that time, so uh, I just said congrats and uh, he said good playing and uh, that was kind of it. But that was really cool. You have a few more college tournaments before the U.S. Open and the, P or the PGA Championship as well. Is your mindset going to change for those majors getting to go play in them as well now that you've gotten to play in one? You mean the U.S. Open? Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're playing for some, some big things as well here. Uh, we're trying to go back to back, which no other Oklahoma State team has ever done before. So I, I'm just going into every single tournament as you know a really important thing. And I'm trying to treat every tournament as the same, uh, even though that's not easy to do, but um, you know, you're a part of a team and you're not, you're not a part of a team anymore if you're, if you're professional, so I really, cherish my time here being with the guys and uh, trying to win college events. How big was that for you at Butler Cabin to be wearing the orange and the swing and Pete and to represent your school the way you played out there last week? Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm proud to be a cowboy and um, uh, I, I like the orange shirt um, and uh, especially I knew he was wearing red so <laughs> we needed to counter that a little yeah. bit. Um, <laughs> no, it's, uh, yeah, I've had a blast, you know, playing college golf here, and um, you know, it brings a smile on my face putting that orange shirt on every time. So, and I have been doing that every kind of Sunday or last round of the of a tournament. Uh, kind of had a thing doing that, so I uh, just decided to keep that going. Victor, how did you end up here? Uh, I uh, well, I played just golf in Europe, and right. uh, they have this tournament called the European Boys mm -hmm. Team Championship. Um, and uh, usually a lot of college coaches come to that to recruit because the, kind of the best players from every single country represent their country in that tournament. Mm -hmm. And uh, coach saw me there in 2013 in Scotland, and um, yeah, he just kind of kept an eye out, and I kept on progressing, and then finally I ended up here. Had you been to, had you heard of Stillwater or Oklahoma either? Not at that time, no. Yeah. Um, so I visited four schools and, um, you know, we don't really know. Uh, you can say Oral Roberts or Oklahoma State. That doesn't really mean anything to me. Right. Um, it doesn't really compute. So, um, yeah, after I took my visits, that, that then it kind of went clear. Sure. How much time at Augusta did you have to prepare um, before the tournament started? Well, you kind of get as much as you want, um, but you don't really want to kind of wear yourself out because it's a long and busy week. And uh, um, yeah, so I, I just played nine holes every day uh, leading up to the tournament. And we had some weather delays, so you couldn't really be out there, which I think almost helped. Uh, it kind of forced me to, to sit inside a little bit and, and relax and just kind of mentally get ready for it. 
Um, so yeah, I like that strategy, but I mean, you can you can play 36 holes if you want, but I don't know if that's a very good idea. After that final round, you had to sweat it out a little bit because Ortiz is right in your tail. And how did you feel overall whenever you found out that you were the low end, that you were alone? Yeah, obviously I had a, I kind of had a good round going uh, on Sunday. I was two under after 11 holes, and on number three I hit a good wedge shot and I missed the putt to go to three under. And uh, after that coming in, I just hit some bad iron shots, made some sloppy bogeys, and kind of finished a little poorly. Um, I, I felt like I had a good, you know, good momentum going mm -hmm. halfway through the round, and knew that if I could, you know, make a couple birdies in, that would be a really, really sweet finish. Um, but I didn't know where I was standing with that amateur race. Um, I, he had, I think, maybe two holes to go when I heard that he was one shot back and he birdied eight. And um, I didn't know. I, I asked a couple, like, yeah, are, how do they go about picking the kind of the low guy from mm -hmm. the tie? Um, and then I heard someone say, oh, I guess you guys both are just going to be in there. And I was like, oh, that, that'd be sweet. Because <laughs> I think, you know, Oliver is a great guy and we're, we're good friends. So I thought... That'd be really special to to share that moment with him in there. Um, fortunately, he made a bogey, but um, so I, I was rooting for him to, you know, for us to be in there together. But uh, yeah, it was. I mean, I had a good time. It was it was a really special moment for me. A non golf question: Did you really learn the language by watching movies? Well, <laughs> we we learned it in school, but that's kind of where uh, I accentuated it I guess I just watched a lot of movies yeah, yeah. anything in particular help uh, well I liked well obviously if you're just starting out and don't know that much you're right. gonna watch the simpler stuff but I enjoyed watching uh, like the movie Lincoln okay because uh, there's so many like old-fashioned hard words that no one uses anymore <laughs> or the one uh, which one's that called uh, Amistad Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I thought that one was cool. Um, yeah, just super weird stuff with a lot of interesting Thinky words. Thinky Man's movies. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. the challenge, it sounds exactly, like. Exactly, exactly. What can you? What do you like that you that you can get here that you can't get back home? Uh, like so that's a good question. Yeah, I mean, some food stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I'm not too picky. I, you know, I can eat whatever. But I do like uh, my mom's food and uh, just kind of, you know, my friends back home and kind of just the culture back home. But mm -hmm. I feel like I've adapted pretty well to how life is over here. Do people put cheese on their fries in Oslo? No, we don't. <laughs> we don't. No, uh, not that many fast food restaurants either. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a little different, but I enjoy it here. Yeah, all right. Anything else?